Finding Your Voice. Welcome to Change the Conversation with the Hopefulist. My name is Wendy McClure, and it's time we had a conversation about living in a patriarchy and how that affects our lives. Together, we can make a difference and change the conversation. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I applaud you and celebrate you for being here to help change the conversation around patriarchy in America so that women, women can live their best lives without being demonized or called selfish or being angry or bitter or called all kinds of names just because they want to live their life on their terms something that men have been allowed to do for centuries. So this is what we're doing here. We are trying to break down the barriers of patriarchy. We're trying to get you to recognize what patriarchy is because we have all lived in patriarchy for so long, we don't even recognize it because it's all we've ever known. We are completely surrounded by it. We are immersed in it. There are two fish that are swimming in the ocean, and an octopus goes by and says, How's the water today, boys? And the one says to the other, What's water? They don't know they're in water because they're immersed in it. It's their life. It's all they've ever known. That's how it is with patriarchy. That's why when I say things about patriarchy, you immediately go, No, no, that can't be it. That can't be true. That's so far-fetched, and it does seem that way at first. But then if you sit with it just a little bit, put a little more thought into it, and go back to it again, it will start to make complete and total sense. Because the system was built this way to keep us in the dark, to keep us not knowing how much we're being taken for granted and taken advantage of. Because again, patriarchy is a system built by men for the benefit of men at the expense of women. And when I say the expense of women, I mean all of the free labor that we provide. All of these years, we have been having babies for them, taking care of the kids, taking care of the house, doing the cooking, doing the cleaning, while they could go off and pursue their dream. They can have it all. They can have the family. They can have the home. They can have the love story. And they can have the career. But women don't get that choice. Because even now that women work, we're still considered to put our career on the back burner once we have children. Because women are supposed to put others first. You're supposed to put the needs of your man first, and then you put the needs of your children first. When do your needs become first? When do you get to put yourself first? That tiny little time between uh, college, uh, when you're in college, before you get married, is that the only time we get? We don't get to do it our whole lives. We only have a short period of time. And maybe if we're lucky, you know, after we've raised the kids, We'll live long enough to just relax, do the things we've always wanted to do if we're in good enough health, and enjoy the grandkids. That's what we have. We have college to marriage and then retirement to death. That's how it shapes up. So this is how we need to change the conversation about how patriarchy holds women back, puts them in a box, tells them how they need to be, and if they're not that way, then they are demonized. So I thought today I would talk a little bit about finding your voice, how to go about finding your voice, and I thought that I would do that by explaining how I found mine. I, it's been a journey, and it is not something that happens overnight. I have been working on this stuff, well, I've been working on personal growth, and self-help my entire life. I have been working on it for years and years and years. But the breakthrough, 
the breakthrough started, and I'll say started in 2016. And I say that because that is when I read the book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Remember, I used to talk about that book all the time. Um, that book just spoke to me in a way that it all made sense to me because it said all of the same things that the other 84 books that I had read on self-help before that, but this one made me take action. And if you haven't gotten to that book yet for you, keep reading books. You'll get there. You will find the one that will make sense to you and spur you into action. So once I, dis- once I discovered this book and I started to do the true work of improving my life, because that is the thing. It's not going to just come to you. You're not going to wake up one day and be ecstatically happy. You have to do the work. I had to do the work. I'm still doing the work. And they call it work for a reason. It is indeed work. And it is especially hard in the beginning. Well, you are not used to doing it. You are going to try and start a gratitude journal and you're going to sit there and you're going to stare at the wall for three minutes and go, I can't think of one single thing that I'm grateful for today. And that's going to be the first day. And then the second day, you're going to think of one thing right away. And then you're going to stare at the wall for another five minutes until you come up with another thing. The same thing with journaling. You know, I freestyle journal all the time. I try to do it every day. I'm not perfect. I don't do it every day, but I I do it more days than not. And the idea of it came from these um, morning pages that I had read about in a book called The Artist's Way. And I have not finished that book, and I really need to. But in it, she talks about doing these morning pages. And she wants you to, which is a very high ambition, I do not do all three. She wants you to write three pages of freestyle journaling each and every morning. And the purpose of this, she says, is to get all of the thoughts that are in your subconscious mind out onto paper so that you vent them, so that you acknowledge them, so that you can free them from your mind. And that way you won't be having them bog you down for the rest of the day. So you're supposed to just write whatever comes to your mind, whatever you're thinking about, And just continue on from there and keep writing until you have nothing left to say. But I will give you this little stipulation. Oftentimes it is said about journaling that it isn't until you get about 20 to 30 minutes in that the real deep down subconscious stuff starts to come and that you start to put that down on paper. And I know that seems like a long time, but it's worth it. Because that is what I wanted to tell you about the work, the work that needs to be done, the work that will never end. I am never going to be finished with my personal growth. I am going to be working on it constantly. And it is work. Like I said, I do try to journal like that. I keep a gratitude journal almost every day. It is work. But I am still the happiest I have ever been. I feel the most purposeful I have ever been. I have goals and dreams and desires that I'm going after, and I will reach them because I am confident in myself to know that I can do what it takes to achieve those goals, to do those accomplishments. Because I've gotten to a point where not only do I love myself, and again, women are not allowed to say that. You might have just cringed a little bit when I said that. I cringed a little bit when I said that because we're not allowed to say that. We're always encouraged to love yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to love yourself. But what's the first thing that happens when a woman says, well, I love myself? What? You, you can't say that. You can, you, I can tell you that you need to love yourself, but you, when you say it, you sound very self-centered and conceited. No. We're not falling for that anymore. When you do get to a point where you love yourself and you will get there, because I used to hate myself. I detested myself. I thought that I was the most unworthy person in the world. And I have managed to turn it around. And what's even better than loving yourself 
is that once you love yourself, you will trust yourself. And when you trust yourself, you know that you will always be okay because you trust that you can get through anything. You trust that you will be able to handle whatever comes your way. I just saw a little meme of a bird sitting on a branch, and it said, the bird doesn't sit on the branch knowing that the branch will hold it. The bird sits on the branch knowing that if it breaks, he can fly away, meaning he knows that he has the control, that he can do what is necessary if the time comes. That's what I want for you. That's where I've gotten to, and that's what has made me so loud and boisterous, even more than I used to be, and spouting out all of the things that I want and wish for and want to achieve in this world. Because I have discovered through all of my self-loathing, through all of the time that I tried to please everybody, that the only person it really mattered to please was myself. And that's the difference that I feel now between when I didn't like myself and I do like myself is I'm not trying to please other people now. In fact, I'm displeasing people. I have many people that have distanced themselves from me. I have family members who are not speaking to me. And I'm still the happiest I've ever been. You know why? Because... I love me, and I go to bed every night when my head hits that pillow being proud of the person that I have become, the person that I am, and what I am trying to achieve. I'm proud of me. I like me. I love me. And I'm only trying to satisfy me now. So that let that be a little lesson for you that I have lost a good number of friends. I've gotten into arguments with family members and, you know, it kind of sets you up to feel a little bit like, oh, so we were right all along. When we do become our true authentic selves, we lose people in our life. Yeah. You know what? I have to admit that's true. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I'm doing what's right for me. And if people have a problem with that, that's their problem. I don't care what they say about me. I don't care what they think about me. I like me. I'm proud of me. And I'm going to keep doing me. I'm going to keep doing what helps me fall asleep with a smile on my face each night. So one of the first steps that I took, and again, this has been a years-long process starting in 2016, I will say that I probably in 2016 started doing a gratitude journal properly for the first time because I had done a gratitude journal before where you write down three to five things that you're grateful for throughout the day, but I did it as sort of a chore. It was kind of like, oh, I didn't get to that gratitude journal thing today. You know, I'm at washing the dishes and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't do it. So, you know, I sit down real quick and I'm like, Okay, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Well, I'm grateful the dishes are done. Uh, Let's see. I'm grateful that the dog, you know, was happy today. I'm grateful that uh, that I'm reading a good book. Okay, so this is is the process. So I just, you know, couldn't think of something that would come with some real quick. That is not how you do a gratitude journal. (laughs) It's just not how it's done. So again, when you first start a gratitude journal, it will take you a long time to come up with things to be grateful for. So here are my personal rules when it comes to writing a gratitude journal. I write five things a day. You can do three things a day. You can do whatever you, whatever sits right with you. When I'm writing down my gratitudes, I relive that moment. If it's Tucker chasing the ball and having such fun, I relive that moment. Oh, it was so great when she was running down the hallway as fast as she could, and she was going so fast she went right past the ball. 
I relive that moment and I feel the gratitude for it. It brings a smile to my face. So you get to relive those moments. And the other thing that I try to do is not repeat things. It, and like once a week, I keep the, the difference of one uh, gratitude. For example, I play pickleball today. That's one. I can't say that now for another week unless something specific happens at pickleball. I worked out today. Can't use that now for another week. If you get really, really stuck, and you will in the beginning, on what to choose to be grateful for, go to the basics. Go to the bare minimums. I'm grateful that I have running hot water. I'm grateful that I have a house that shelters me. I'm grateful that I have food in the refrigerator. I actually encourage you to include these, not, not just these, but include these in your gratitudes to remind us of how lucky and blessed we are and how we take such simple things as running hot water, electricity, a house, and food for granted. Because there are many people in this world that don't have any of that, let alone a smartphone or a television or a car. So I want you to remember to stop taking things for granted so much. When it comes to the uh, gratitude journal, it's so simple to just find something that you've overlooked a million times. Like I'm looking at the curtains that I have in the office right now. I've had these curtains forever. And you know what? Still love them. Still love them. So I'm gr grateful for those today. I'm grateful for my computer that can help me record this podcast. You can just look around in the room that you're in and find so many things to be grateful for. My bookshelves are right over there. They are filled with books. I am grateful for all of my books. I see a prayer book that I got when Joe's mom passed away that we have up on display. I'm grateful that they gave me the prayer book because I'm the one that asked for it. There's so much in this room that I can be grateful for. My dog is laying right next to me on the floor. Grateful for that. Just look around. Honestly, just look around. The other thing that you have to do in order to find your own voice, to stop being upset and to control your emotional behavior a little bit, and this is a big one, you have to stop taking things so personally. You have to stop getting upset over every little thing. Like getting mad in traffic. Well, what purpose does that serve? Traffic is going to jam. There are going to be times that you're stuck in your car and you are just going to have to sit there and wait it out. So pump up the radio, put on some of your favorite music, and enjoy it. View it as a break rather than something you don't want to do, which I know, easier said than done. But you know what the thing is about easier said than done? Everything is easier said than done. Right? Think about that for a second. Everything is easier said than done. So you have to stop taking things so personally. I have had uh, people in stores treat me rudely, and I would get so upset. How dare they? How dare they treat me that way? I am the customer. You know what? It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's not worth it. It is not worth getting upset over these little teeny tiny things that are going to have no impact on your life overall. You know, a good rule of thumb is to ask yourself, is this going to bother me in a year from now, five years from now? Am I even going to remember it? If the answer is no, let it go. And that's something you need to work on. Another thing I, I did was I removed uh, 
I removed myself from places where I didn't feel welcome. And I have a couple examples of this. One of them was social media. You know, I used to live in Pennsylvania. I had this huge group of friends that I used to hang out with all the time. And when I moved to New Jersey, I would still see them all getting together. I would still see them uh, hanging out and having fun. And it got to the point where they didn't even invite me anymore. And it just made me feel bad. It just, just made me feel bad. So I removed them from my social media. And now I never see it. And now it never bothers me because I don't see it. See how much sense that makes? Just remove them. Or, you know, if you don't want to remove them, unfollow them so that you don't see their posts all the time. If you want to remain, you know, friends with them on Facebook, that's fine. But just remove their posts. And then you can still go back to their actual page if you want to catch up on what's going on with the kids or what have you. Or you could just message them. You don't have to see every single thing that they're posting. It's not a requirement. I also have this group of people that started taking over the time that I played pickleball indoors. And frankly, they're jerks. They're mean. They wing the ball at me and I'm afraid that I'm going to get hit in the face with a ball and get a black eye. Because that's how fast they're hitting it sometimes. They're making comments to me like, you've got to stop popping up the ball. Okay, would you like to tell me how? Because I would love to stop popping up the ball. And I would love for you to stop telling me every problem you have with my playing. Because you know what? This is rec play. It's not a tournament. So sit your butt down and shut the hell up. You know what I did? I stopped going to that time period. I just stopped going. You know, I can... I used to take the attitude of I'm not going to deprive myself of playing pickleball because I was there first and I'm allowed to play. And how dare they make me feel that way? And I would go there and I would be miserable the entire time. So who was winning? It certainly wasn't me. I was walking away every day feeling like they didn't want me there. I didn't want to be there. So I just removed myself. Don't feel bad about it anymore. It's really that simple. It's not about backing down or, you know, getting the respect you deserve. It's about peace. Honestly, it is about peace. And what is going to bring you peace and make you happiest? This was big for me. This was the big step for me with finding my voice and starting to speak it more and more and more, much to Many people's chagrin, maybe yours. I don't know. Do something you're afraid to do. I know nobody wants to hear that. Well, there's a reason I'm afraid to do it because I'm afraid. I know. Now, you know that the podcast and the theme have all switched since June 24th of 2022. Yes, that was the day that Roe was overturned and women became second-class citizens in this country. And that has outraged me so much that I felt the need to post about it on my own personal social media, which was something that I was always afraid to do in the past. I did not want to get into politics. I did not want to get into controversial issues. I didn't want to take one side of something for fear of people coming at me from the other side. But I decided that this was too important. That this women losing the right to their own body to be forced to endure nine months of pregnancy and delivery of a child that they do not want was important enough for me to overcome my fear. And so I put on one post, and it was mostly ignored. And I put on another post, and I didn't die. And I put on another post, and I might get a like. And I put on another post, and somebody came at me for my opinion, and I defended my opinion. And I continued to do that. And what I realized was I could have been doing this all along. It wasn't that scary. That once I got through those first couple ones and 
I didn't die. Because, you know, what are really, what are we afraid of? What are we afraid is going to happen? We're afraid that people aren't going to like us. Again, I've already discussed that. I have lots of people that don't like me now. And guess what? I don't care. You know, there is a tinge. Trust me. Yes, it's been difficult. But I am still the happiest I have ever been. And I am on a mission that nothing will stop. No one will stop. Because when you love yourself, you realize you don't need tons and tons of people to support your cause, to support you. You need a couple. You need a couple. I have my husband. I have a few good friends. And now I'm making new friends. Friends who are more in line with the purpose that I am trying to achieve. And I have a couple of good old standbys. But you don't need the masses to love you. You just need to love and approve of yourself and trust yourself. So that was my example of doing something I was afraid of, which was posting on social media. Now I do things that I don't really com- feel comfortable with all the time. I became a member of NOW, which is the National Organization for Women. And I went to a couple events this year where I would stand at the booth and ask strangers that were walking by to sign our, peti- our petition to ensure that women keep reproductive rights in the state of New Jersey. That was very outside my comfort zone, but I did it. And I will do it again. And I will do it again. And the other thing that I do now is I'm constantly working on my personal growth. I talked about this earlier with the gratitude journal and the free journaling. Um, I have an app that's called Growth Day. If you're interested in that, let me know. I can send you more information about it. But there's an app. It's just called Growth Day. It's a, an orange icon. And uh, every day, uh, Brendan Bouchard, who I love, does what he calls a daily fire. And it's a little bit of inspiration first thing in the morning. And I listen to that every single day. And I track things. I track my habits and my productivity and the sense of accomplishment that I have and the confidence that I have and how far am I getting to achieving the goal or the accomplishment that I'm after. I do all of this stuff. It's work. It's a lot. But it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. So if you would like to know more about how I came to find my voice, the journey that I was on, the path that I took, please feel free to reach out. And I can offer you a number of different programs of empowerment coaching. That's right. We're going to empower all the women. And then we're going to take over, ladies. That's right. We are going to get our equal rights. And I will not stop until it happens, which means I'm going to be doing it till the day I die, and I'm totally fine with that. But if you would like some coaching on how to find your voice, on how to empower yourself to do the things that you really want to do, check out my website at hopeless.com. You'll see some different options there. Shoot me a message through social media, any of the Um, the outlets, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I'm on all of them. And if you liked today's episode, if something resonated with you or if you heard something that you think a friend would benefit from, pass it on. Tell your friend about it. Copy the link and send it right to them. Share one of my social media posts. I would truly appreciate it. So I I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here, especially if you're still listening at this time. And I want you to have the most fabulous week. Go on out there and be badass. You know I'm cheering you on. Thank you for joining me in this conversation. Together, we are better. Please visit my website at hopefulist.com. And remember to hit that subscribe or follow button.